Stuart has chosen his team carefully. At the helm, his nephew Ohol, an expert boatsman, and at the prow, his friend Ham, a nest hunter like himself, his spiritual son, so to speak. At last, the foothills of the Morang Mountains. From here on, there'll be more and more rapids and dead tree trunks, but Tewitt directs the pirogue like an orchestra conductor. cliff, banana trees, a watchman's shack. This looks like a spot for a cave with swallow's nests. Oh Hung steers straight for a cave hidden in the vegetation. I hope we'll find some to harvest. Ooh. Me too. Yeah, yeah. Uh. Mm -hmm. Ah, there's some. There are nests. I'll scrape. You catch them down below. It's almost off. Catch it. Okay. There are three types of swiftlets that make edible nests. These nests aren't as good quality since they're composed partly of plants. This is made from moss, roots and rock moss. This here is from saliva. It's the side that's stuck to the rock. We'll barely make a dollar by selling it. Just enough for a pack of cigarettes. <laughs> Generally, we'd rather eat it than sell it. Right. It makes you strong and gives you vitality. After a day in the pirogue under the blazing sun, it's time to stop. We are almost right on the equator here. The sun sets all at once at 6 p.m. This is a perfect spot to set up camp. Tewitt knows the best camps are close to the river on high ground in case of a flash flood. This is the dry season, but you never know. The water allows us to bathe and cook and generally make everything a little better. It's not like it used to be. Before, fishing was too easy. There's no more crayfish now. But before, the amount of fish has dropped and I have no idea how many we're going to catch. Tuet is a Dayak. That's what the natives of Borneo's great forest and rivers are called. He learned to walk, paddle, and fish at the same time. 
his rare ancestors lived in harmony with a seemingly inexhaustible nature. Stuart and Ham have told me about a cave with an evocative name, Gua Sungai, the cave of the river. Swallows used to nest here. They want to see if they've returned. No sooner do we enter than we have our first surprise. The cave's guardian. This three meter long snake can snatch a bat or swallow right out of the air. Though it's a garter snake, its bites are fearsome since they don't easily heal. It isn't the cave's only surprise. True to its name, a river runs through the cave during the rainy season. The water dissolves the limestone and creates these prolific concretions and hanging basins. Could this be an evil spirit changed into stone? It's no surprise that the island's natives have always maintained a complex relationship of attraction and repulsion with the underground realm. Here, all sorts of underground animals live in pitch dark. Though the nest hunters have managed to overcome their fears in the interest of economics, they nevertheless don't linger once their business is completed. Tewitt, however, is a true caver. He explores out of curiosity and is always on the lookout. Here, he finds neither swallows nor paintings only a large bat colony, and the two species don't live together. Oh my, there are a lot of bones. Make it crispy, it's going to be delicious. This isn't cooked enough. Tomorrow we may have to walk. The river is too low and it's going to be hard on the water. We'll leave early at 7 or 8. 